So it's June 19th and Tim Rogers recording with the Farm News Media team. And we are out with Steve Ewald in Carroll, Michigan, right? Yes. For our first cab cam, sponsored by Tri-County Equipment. A great day to be out in Michigan in the planning. Uh, it's been a late planning season. Steve, thanks for letting me ride along with you. Well, it's my pleasure to have you in the cab today and share a little bit about what goes along, goes on with Ewald Farms Incorporated. Uh, this cab cam is brought to you by Tri-County Equipment. We appreciate their sponsorship. I want to talk about the tractor and the planter that we're in. Um, can you tell us, tell us a little bit about the tractor? Yeah, this is a John Deere 245R, uh, purchased through Tri-County uh, about five years ago now. And the planter is also, I think we bought them as a package. Uh, so the planter is a John Deere on an Orthman frame, which they call a DR2422. Um, and that was all from, from Tri-County. And uh, we, they've got some good good sales staff down there and some knowledgeable, pe knowledgeable people when it comes to, to equipment. Um, experience is a big thing down there. And, and uh, we, we like to draw on that experience. Talk about this uh, 8245R. Um, you know, with the new R-Series tractors, I guess they're not new anymore, but talk about the difference with the R-Series from the old series. Um, what, do you, what do you like about it? Well, definitely the cab is more spacious. Uh, air conditioning and the vent, all of that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, uh, this is a 2010 model. A couple years after this, they went to a touch screen down here to control hydraulics, which made them even nicer. Oh, wow. uh, they're a lot quieter than the older tractors were, even the, uh, you know, we run a lot of like 8200s, 8000 series tractors. Yeah. Nice tractors to cultivate in that, but uh, uh, these ones are just noticeably quieter. Awesome. So I know the newest thing with the planters is the add-ons and, and, and talk about um, what's, how is this planter equipped? And tell me a little bit more about the planter. Well, this planter, uh, when we bought it, we were set up with uh, uh, John Deere air pressure, down uh, air, down pressure, and uh, pretty much standard uh, hydraulic drive at that time from Deere. Uh, since then, we have gone to where we are today with electric drives uh, from Precision. Um, we've gone with the uh, Delta Force down pressure, hydraulic down pressure. Uh, this year we put on the Schlegel wheels for closing wheels, which I think has been nice in the, in the wet ground. Planters are a big thing. We try to stay pretty close uh, to the edge in technology as far as planters go. And it's been a, good, been a good unit for us. So, Steve, can you tell us um, about your family farm and who all is involved uh, in your operation? Well, uh, we actually started with my father years ago, and uh, in about 1999, we I decided decided to make a push towards organic production, which we did, and uh, you know, it was trying, but it worked out pretty well for us. So now we've got. Uh, my, my son is involved, my son-in-law, and we've got, uh, well, three full-time employees that help us farm here. We uh, operate about 2,000 acres, uh, all certified organic, uh, or at least in transition to. And what kind of crops are you planting? Today we're planting uh, black beans. So we grow uh, blacks, navies, uh, uh, willing to grow any type of dry bean. We like dry beans. We grow yellow corn, blue corn, uh, food grade or feed grade soybeans so uh, we're spread out pretty well we do some wheat uh, spelt even uh, if the market is there so a little bit of everything so how many years have you been in the specialty crop business well since about 99 uh, when we went organic shortly after that uh, we had our first taste of blue corn uh, and it wasn't really a good taste uh, but it's come a long way since then and uh, in those early years the, the moisture was as high as the yield so there wasn't any money to be made so uh, but the blue corn varieties have progressed and uh, uh, although there's still a short day variety 88 day or so um, you know they're, they're just doing a lot better the yield isn't what yellow corn would yield uh, however the price is there and it is something different we like to be diversified and that gives us a reason to have a shorter day variety on the farm okay so it's been a really wet year across the state of Michigan I, you know we've had record rainfalls and a lot of growers are, are struggling it looks like the thumb we're up here in the thumb of Michigan and things are looking a little bit better um, where are you guys at for planning progress well we're obviously behind uh, we're not extremely wet here but we've had we've been plagued with uh, frequent rainfall which has kept us out of the field 
and uh, and set us back. So normally we start planting yellow corn, uh, you know, 15th, 18th of, of May. Um, and this year it was a lot closer to June when we got started. And actually today being Wednesday, about 10, to, 10 days ago, we finished planting yellow corn. Uh, the way the rains came, we were able to uh, plant some soybeans early because we had fields that were slotted to be corn that were too wet so and for sake of trying to stay on time we changed everything over and planted some soybeans and uh, so our soybeans are in for the most part uh, and up for the most part um, we've had to pull out of our blue corn just because we didn't think it we're not sure we could get a quality crop being the 19th of June yep so we've switched and planted some soybeans in place of that and some dry beans will take up a few of those acres as well. So, so excuse my ignorance, but you know, for some of us that aren't, aren't really familiar with organic crops, and I, I, I gotta ask you, so yellow corn and blue corn, the words that you use, so blue corn is the, explain what blue corn is? Uh, blue corn is corn, only it's blue instead of yellow. Really? If you eat blue corn chips from yep. a grocery store, that's, they that's use blue, blue corn to make blue corn chips. Huh. Yeah. How many growers um, are growing blue corn? Is that a is that a big a big market or small or? It's fairly small, uh, limited number of acres. Uh, you know, we've been in it for years. Uh, there's some. Uh, there's probably 1,500 to 2,500 acres being grown in the thumb, I would guess, and uh, it kind of varies. Uh, and all all of it ends up in Minnesota at a plant there to to make chips with it. So. Uh, they also grow it out there, so we kind of compete with, with with the homeboys. So I know there's a small pocket of, of growers here in the Thumb that are organic, right? Um, yes. You guys uh, kind of network and learn from each other. Oh, I think so. Uh, if even if we don't admit it, we're surely watching the neighbors to see what works and what doesn't. So uh, yeah, we've uh, uh, it's been that way since the beginning. Even you know, 20 years ago, it was probably more so because it was a lot of small farmers that were were doing it and uh, you know the big elevators weren't buying crops so you had to you had to network with people to find markets for your product so that uh, so you guys kind of work together a little bit to market the product oh definitely uh, I'm uh, president of a group called organic farmers of Michigan as well uh, and that's a group of about 90 people 93 people uh, that market uh, crops as one unit basically so we've got more to put forward to an okay. end user so uh, but there's you know uh, Everbest Organics is a big uh, buyer cooperative elevator now which uh, a couple of years ago bought organic bean and grain uh, you know and they're making their push into organics too and it'll it'll be nice to uh, to have the competition uh, you know it's a lot easier today to sell your products you know it used to be that you didn't want to plant something unless you had a, uh, a market for it or a contract for it. But uh, given the fact that there are more people involved, even locally, okay. that's helped new growers come in with, with storage facilities that maybe farmers can't didn't have, you know, so they can store it in an elevator now. So is, what are the trends in organics that you guys are seeing from the consumer side? Is it is, it's still growing? Uh, yeah, end use is, uh, I think we past the uh, 50 billion dollar mark this year wow. Uh, wow. so you know that's nationwide uh, it's growing every year uh, usually around a six percent pace um, it's impressive. a lot of you know there's a lot of new interest especially with low conventional prices um, you know so that naturally puts some pressure on the organic marks markets as well um, you know tariffs are never a good thing that that, that doesn't help us sell stuff um, but you know, the best thing for a healthy organic market is a healthy conventional market. So we want everyone to be able to, to move product. That makes sense. You know, what kind of disease issues do you have in the organic market? And, and if, you, if you do have disease issues, what do you do to, to, to combat those things? Surprisingly, we don't seem to have a lot of disease. Um, wheat can be an issue for us growing uh, food grade white wheat. We like to grow white wheat. And uh, you know, like the conventional producers, they've had fungus issues, and yeah. we've got some products that are able to be used there. But um, 
the trouble of for us is if if our products though not as strong as a conventional product might be uh, may help us but if it doesn't help guarantee us a good price then we end up selling into a feed market um, you know and there's just a lot of other things to grow if we can so yeah. you know we're always looking for for better ways to grow uh, things and that's one of the one of the hopes that we have for big business getting into organics is maybe there'll be more money put into uh, research and development for new products and, and varieties and we feel that plant breeding is you know obviously been big in, in GMO development and we feel that there's probably room for uh, good genetics to be bred in uh, without the genetic alteration. You know um, weed management how do you how do you tackle uh, weeds in your fields uh, with organics talk a little bit about that. Wheat management is, uh, on a year like this, is pretty trying because uh, if you can't be in the field, it's pretty hard to run a tillage tool to uh, because that's really the only way we've got. So for weed management, tillage tools or? We're looking at tillage tools. Uh, we use, uh, you know, we've got different tying weeders and single rotary hose and double rotary hose that we use. Uh, sometimes in corn and soybeans, we can use flaming. Yeah. Uh, which is actually propane and, and fire to, yeah. burn, to burn the weeds off. Um, on a year like this, we're a little concerned that, you know, we might need those five or seven days that it sets the corn back. So we'll try to keep the flamers out. Because um, when you go into the fields and you flame the crop, it stunts it for a few days? Well, when you're flaming corn, you know, basically you're burning, you're going to kill the leaves that are there. Yeah. So it takes new growth to come out. And if you've got cold weather or that, you know, slow growing corn, um, it takes a while for it to come back so okay. you know if you've got 75 degrees 80 degrees and sunshine you know in three days you're you're headed back towards green again but it uh, you need some good conditions and, and the corn's a corn's a, a funny thing you know you don't lose much in the way of stand with flaming where any type of uh, mechanical tillage you've always got problems with taking out stand makes sense so a lot goes into the organic crops, and I'm sorry for all the questions, uh, but you know I think a lot of our viewers and a lot of the people that across the state don't know a lot about organics, especially to come to a, a place like this and see it, because um, you know you're a pretty good sized operation. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of myths I think in, with organic crops. If, if, what do you, what is the most common questions you have from your neighbors or from consumers that you get with organics? Well, I think. You know, there's always the obvious question, is it really any better than, than conventional? And, you yeah. know, I mean, that's totally up to the consumer. That's what we've liked about organic farming is it's everything we do um, is for the consumer and it's a choice that the, the consumer yeah. can make. Um, if they feel that, you know, I, I can't say that mine is more nutritious or, or tastes better, but what I can say for sure is I didn't use glyphosate or, yeah. or some chemical that might be getting a bad rap today. Whether it's whether it's a bad rap or not, it doesn't matter. It's in the media, and, and uh, it doesn't help. So, I, I think that's one of the things. You know, another would be, uh, you know, how do you deal with the weeds, or is it worth it to have to put all the hours in? Because we do put a lot of hours in uh, in the summertime. We don't spend much time at the lake, and uh, you know, we just feel that it is. You know, honestly, years ago when we got into this. Uh, sugar beets weren't a good thing for us. Uh, we were struggling with yields, and and uh, I didn't have the depth of pockets, you know, the money in the pockets yep. to to carry us through some of those bad times. And I had to find a way to to make things go. So, how many row planter is this? It's a 24 row planter, 22 inch row spacing. Okay. Have you have you experimented with spacing on planters at all? Before I bought this planter, we were actually 28 inch rows. Uh, which were fine. Um, 28 was kind of an odd number. These tractors uh, with the bigger cabs, and they got to be about so big. And uh, with 28 inch rows, it took a 56 inch center for wheels, and it's just a little tight. And if you okay. want to work in the cab or between the cab and the tires, it's just about impossible. So uh, we started looking at, we didn't want to go wider yep. row spacing out to 30, so we've always admired the guys that were already 22 inch rows and obviously some are narrower than that now but um, so we made the change back in 13 I think it was and, and um, 
definitely makes the tractors go down the row better and we spend a lot of time in the row so that's that's a big thing to us exactly. so talk about the other equipment that you have from tri-county um, that, that you use um... well we use uh, we've run a couple of john deere combines and and uh, we got a 9650 sts and a 9870 that we run uh, the 9650 we kind of have it tweaked a little bit for dry beans um, Believe it or not, every once in a while we run into a weedy patch in the fall. <laughs> so we try to yeah. we, we try to have something that is uh, you know uh, tuned a little bit to handle some weed seed or something like that. So okay. Well, Steve, I appreciate letting us ride along today. This has been uh, been our first episode of the Farm News Cap Cam, sponsored by Tri County. Um, how many more acres do you guys have to plant yet? We probably have about 600 acres or just over 600 acres today. Um, you know, that's that's three or four days for us, uh, you know, pushing a little but not crazy. And if we could just put two or three together, it would be nice. I know, Mother Nature would just hold off on this rain, right? Absolutely. They calling for rain up here tonight? Uh, light rain tonight and possibly some heavier showers in spots tomorrow morning and through the, through the early part of the day. So we're praying to miss those. and. And that's all we can do is we'll take what the good Lord gives us and yep. just smile. Well, thanks again for letting us ride along. Uh, this cab camp has been sponsored by Tri-County, gracious sponsor, and uh, we'll see you down the road. All right.